Hello, all you lovely internet people. What is up? My name is Lance of Snow, and today we have a Warcraft themed video. And I thought it was high time that I done a not a review, but my view on the new expansion Legion. What I think about it, what I've been doing, you know, all that lovely jazz. I know I'm quite late to the party, as Legion has been out for about two. Is it two? Two and a half weeks or so. But I'm just gonna take you around what I'm currently doing in game, who I'm playing and what I'm what class I'm starting to main and all that other fun stuff. So I hope you enjoy. If you see anything that you can advise me to, you know, do better or like a slight rotation change or something, please let me know below. I need all the help I can because I may be a very casual player but I like to do things right, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a like, and let's get going. My main in Legion is a troll shaman. I decided to go down the shamanistic route because, I don't know why, I've always had an attraction to the elements and things in this game, and the fact that one of my favourite expansions, if not the favourite, is Cataclysm, and it's about everything going all the hell, and the elemental lords coming back and all this awesome stuff and throughout the class order campaign for a shaman you get to interact with all these uh, earth lords and things and it's just awesome so far my spec of choice is enhancement I now get to wield doom hammer just like king thrall king thrall and as you can see here we are you see on the the right is the actual doom hammer and on the left is what's known as the fury of the stone mother created through the power of the doom hammer and the powerful shaman who wields it seeing the doom hammer is a one-handed weapon an enhancement shamans need two single-handed weapons it's kind of cool that the doom hammer created this other one for us so this is where i am at the minute i'm a level 110 enhancement shaman I am Fire Lord Gamu, which I thought was an awesome title considering I'm a shaman. But overall, just as a, a big picture, so far Legion has been fantastic. And as I said, I'll go through what I'm doing, what I've done, what my favourite parts of this have been, what my least favourite parts of this have been, overall kind of point of view and things. So let's introduce you to the Shaman Order Hall. So. The Shaman Order Hall is back on Azeroth. Well, I suppose we're all on Azeroth, goddamn. But the majority of Order Halls are all on the Broken Isles. Hunters have theirs in High Mountain, Druids have theirs in Valshara, Warriors have theirs in Stormheim. Well, not really Stormheim, but it's their themed zone. Ours is in the Maelstrom. As you can see, there's Azeroth. We are here. Maelstrom. Oh, you can't really see it. It's just its own wee thing. <laughs> Broken Islands. Maybe it's in here somewhere special. Ooh. But um, I love how we use existing uh, locations to be our order halls and stuff. So I'll show you my favourite part of this order hall. It's so cool. This is where we upgrade our weapon. See, when we gather artifact power, then we level all these up. Is where we see the appearances. I've only unlocked four so far because I'm still nowhere near done anything. You know, the bog standard, a slightly red hue, slightly lighter view, and then a slightly grayer one. <coughs> the class order uh, shaman campaign will reward this, and that's awesome. Our every artifact trait, which is a long way off because it takes forever to gain artifact power, gives you a yellow hue. Research the full history of your artifact in your class hall. That's talking to a wee woman to research your artifact. Is a green one. That's awesome. And this side up rewards uh, like a fairy one. I haven't looked to see what this side up achievement is, but I'm sure it'll be a bit hard. And then the cooler ones are for like raids and unleashed monstrosities. That's awesome. Challenge mode dungeon using a level kit 15 keystone. Not gonna happen. Glory of the Legion Hero may happen years from now, and then the Black Hands Fate are all uh, 
they're all PvP rewards. Let's actually go to the pink one. <laughs> but this is where we upgrade our artifact, right on the, the edge of the Maelstrom. And if you play Cataclysm, you'll know that we faced Almighty Deathwing here, Lord of Everything. So it is pretty much what you would expect for a Shaman Art Hall. Everything is just watery and earth, and there'll be a bit of fire. And <clears throat> here we are. This is Light Heart. It's a it's the whole story. I'll not get into it too much, but it gives us quests in order to uh, research Illidan's life and. It's pretty cool. There's Duke Hydraxis, which is the emissary of the Waterlord, Neptulon. They all hang out down here. We'll mount up and move a bit quicker. And we have some pools. Pretty awesome. It's very rainy though. It's very damp feeling. Over here is where we hire uh, these group of guys. The Earthen Ring. Hold on, I'll try to find what they are. The Circle of Earth Callers. They send these guys away on missions. Here's a portal of the Vortex Pentacle where you had to go speak and arrange uh, travel for the Wind Lord. The Deep Home Portal, take you to the Earth Mother, Therizine. This is a little puzzle from Puzzle Master Low. I have no fucking idea how to do it. I haven't watched any YouTube videos or Flip the totems until they're all water totems, but when you click one, three around it change, it's really, it becomes really awkward then. So I just don't. Here's the fire aspect. This is the guy who upgrades your order hall. Here's your mission board, which is very similar to the garrison thing from old days, but not as full on all the time. I'll probably be able to show you my champions here now. Maybe. Duke Hydraxis. If you hire him, he comes and kind of helps you when you're out in the field. All kinds of things. And because I upgraded a, a certain part of the order hall, I now have an elemental blessing, which is... What is this one? This the Spirit of the Earth Lord grounds you mastery increase by 10% within the Broken Isles. But it drops off very quickly. If you leave the Broken Isles, it drops away and you never see it again. If you die, it drops off. While these other buffs, the Blessing of Life and the Greater Drainic Agility Flask, they stay around. Well, no, sorry, the Blessing of Life doesn't because it's another one. It's another uh, elemental thing. Here we are on just the entrance to the Maelstrom portal with some training dummies. Another cool shot of the Maelstrom. It's just so fucking cool. I love it here. So. Now I've shown you the order hall, I'll show you the vague rotation and don't give me grief please, I, I'm not a 100% hardcore raider so if I do anything different or in the wrong order, again as I said earlier, please let me know. So because when we picked up Doomhammer we got this, which was a trait, unleashes the inner part of the Doomhammer causing all auto attacks to trigger Wind Fury and increases damage dealt by Wind Fury by 200% for 6 seconds. So. Basic rotation, some cool looking animations, so let's give it a blast. There's the Wind Fury, Lightning Bolt, can't remember what these are called, but the animations are awesome. Get some wind on the go, some lightning, ah, I didn't do it enough. Lava Lash, uh, Storm Strike, I know I'm doing this out of order, but I apologize. Grip, um, wait for this to cool down. So, my rotation is Lightning Bolt, Flame. No, Lightning Bolt, Boulder Fist, Flame Tongue, Frost Brand, uh, Crash Lightning, Storm Strike, and then if there's nothing else, Lava Lash. Lava Lash is quite cool, as is Storm Strike because it hits like a motherfucker. And um, when I'm with a group, like a pull a group of enemies, then I put up Fury of Air, which just damages everything in that little path. Then I have Feral Spirits, which are class. They also help out by just taking attention away from me. Then of course you've got Ascendants. Pop into, is it an Earth Elemental or an Air Ascendant? It has a slightly different air attack, but majority of the same attacks. Then you have Astral Shift, that kind of shields you from damage for a while. So far I haven't had any 
massive bother killing things in the Broken Isles. The odd time I have a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare, but that might just be because I'm tired and not really paying attention. But that's pretty much it for the order hall. Um, I do have three three more max level characters. I have my troll shadow priest. I have a frost mage, which is Pandaren, who's the alliance uh, character. And I have a blood elf demon hunter. And I went and got their artifacts the night Legion launched. And since then I haven't really played too many of them. So I will go into them and show you their order halls and stuff. Um, I'll show you some spells too. I haven't really looked into them too much. But, yes. This was Shaman Order Hall. And now we will go to the areas on the Broken Isles. So you jump through a little portal and it takes you to Dalaran. As we all know, Dalaran has came to the Broken Isles with us to fight this massive threat, just like it did in Northrend. So you pop out here, it's handy because it's right beside the Flight Master. And let's see, where will we go? I think we will start on the left and work our way around, and I'll show you some of the zones. Just before we go any further, um, when you do achieve, whoop, when you do get uh, some artifact power, I myself is I'm a little bit biased towards the Doom Hammer animation. Shh. How, how rude! Burning Legion are rude as well as evil, but when you use artifact power, each class will have like a little animation to power up their weapon, and I like the Doom Hammer one because it does this. Power on the elements. So, there was, what, like 700 odd, and I need, I'm currently at 1597, I need another 11,000 artifact power to get a next, my next rank, which will take forever. But this is Zuna, the, the, the Naga central, kind of, it has a really Naga central theme in this zone. This is where the Eye of Jara is, the, the dungeons. We also, the faction here is the Court of Ferrandus. And once you get to max level and uh, become friendly with all the factions, you unlock world quests and you get a different emissary quest every day. And uh, today for me is to do four world quests in Azuna for the Court of Ferrandus. So once I finish recording, I will do that. So you can see, this was very, it's, it's very Night Elven, you know, it's very, has that Night Elven feel. Uh, some ghosts, some dead folk, <laughs> and you go down and there's big giant fucking Naga brutes, and here's some more Naga, and then this is a big, big Naga area, which is cool because you can destroy harpoons, which, oh no, I, oh my god, I've just realised, you don't destroy the harpoon, you destroy the harpooner behind it, Spazant. But there was a quest line uh, when you quest here that involves coming in here, the North Alas Academy. Oh my god, it was so much fun. It was so stupid and so daft. It felt like you were in magic school. You had to go find some books and then defeat an enemy that spawned from the book. But it went back to like an olden day when people were writing the books. and It was so, so cool. So in terms of zones, Azuna is where I started first and it was okay I mean it's nothing we haven't seen before with you know Naga along coastlines of night elven zones but this was meh it was a good zone to start then I jumped over to uh, Stormheim Stormheim was a bit annoying in my eyes anyway because it was it felt like the same kind of quest there was very high Vicral but is it Vicral? Or very Viking presence in that particular area. Then I jumped to Valshara, and Valshara is my favorite zone, and I will show you now why. Also in this game, uh, as there was with Warlords, there are little treasure chests all over the place, and when you get to a certain rep ground with the faction in that area, they'll sell you a map, and you can find them all over the place, but in these you get little bursts of artifact power all the time. 
we got, what do we get? Condensed Light of a Loon, which is the artifact power. A Ruined Spellbook, which is gold, really. Water Stained Tower Deck, which is some more gold. And some Order Resources to send uh, champions away on missions and upgrading your Order Halls and researching your artifact. So let's just use the artifact now. Yay! So this is my favorite zone in the game. Val Shira. And this is my favorite part of the zone. You come here while you quest and you have Ysera, you have Malfurion, you have Scenarius, you have all the other uh, uh, like druid lords almost. It's such a beautiful place. I mean look at that. Look at this. Get out of the way, Demon Hunter. I mean just it's so, so lovely. And you can imagine, it's going to sound weird, but you can imagine it smells nice too. A little waterfall and all the nice animals and all the little fireflies. It's just an awesome, awesome looking area. But this is one reason why I like this zone. The other reason is the fact that it's all lovely and peaceful here. But as you move through the zone, it gets darker and more corrupt and... Things get a lot more evil looking and I shall show you what I mean. Basically in this zone you quest through and you uh, chase after the shade of Xavius and he kidnaps Malfurion and he needs to kind of work back in order to get Malfurion back. Ooh, there's a big giant rare, stay away from him. There is quite a big story plot in this zone but I'll not tell you what it is in the video in case you haven't done it before but let's just say it's it's heart wrenching it's good though it makes you feel like this expansion is quite terrifying and shit is gonna happen so it adds to the story but this this is the other part of this zone I like the corrupted area or the emerald nightmare as it's known everything is red and black I mean look at the desecrated ancient that's what they look like corrupted and there is one literally just down here there's the normal one looks like a big tree it's like hello mr. tree evil looking face though and there is the ancient annihilator all broken and corrupted and I really don't know what else to say about this zone it's just fantastic on the emerald dream feel of the zone it's beautiful peaceful you can see yourself living there but then when you get to the nightmare it's slightly terrifying and just awesome to look at plus the music changes a little bit and it gets a little bit more eerie I should also say that among just like regular quests for the story and things there is so so much uh, side questing to be done the professions are so so kind of in-depth now um, my previous main last expansion was the Shadow Priest and it had dual crafting and mining. I decided to go for something a little bit more shamanistic here and went for leather working and skinning because you know you kill you may as well use what you kill and there's no waste it's perfect. I leveled level leather working up to a decent level and then started into the Broken Isles and Leatherworking has given me so many quests to go kill this rare to learn this particular thing and go do this and collect this and I kept it keeps saying to a friend it's like you get two three quests from somebody you go do those quests you get everything they need you go back you hand them in and they're like oh thanks for that here's another six then you go to Dalaran and there's uh, quests for your class orders and there's the uh, quests for your professions and then there's little side quests about Illidan and there's little things here and little things there it got to a case where my uh, quest log was just so full and the majority of it wasn't even there you have artifact quest lines when you reach 102 you open up the other artifacts that you don't have for your specs and you can go do those as well as world quest opening at 110 you're also continuing your class order hall that kind of goes along on its own a little bit and it joins in with the main one I mean this is where I am at the minute I need to complete this quest which is complete 30 world quests I'm six away from it 
so I should get that today but then once that's complete once I got the max level and opened world quests this I had to do for my class order hall so once that's complete then it'll open up another little bit in my class campaign which I can't wait because as far as I'm aware for a shaman you need to have the elemental lords on your side I've got the wind lord on my side I've got the water lord on my side I've got Thursday and the earth mother there's only one more element I need to request to be on our side and it's fire my favorite villain in this game is Ragnaros now Ragnaros is theoretically dead if you killed him in on heroic in cataclysm but if you've done it on normal he's still alive so same thing with Alakir the wind lord you actually go summon his uh, son to be the elemental lord for wind so I can't wait to see what comes next in my Shaman Orahal campaigns but as I said I will show you some little bits and pieces from the other three max level characters I have here we have my shadow priest this was my main all the way through uh, warlords of Draenor and I loved it uh, the only thing that put me off maining it this time is there was a lot of changes to Shadow Priest. It became more voidish and it moved away from the more priestish side so it lost its own healing spells and things. I mean that, that's fine it makes sense because why should a Shadow Priest heal using light when it uses dark magic to deal damage but we are constantly in shadow form now. Hello! <laughs> This is my weapon, I will show you. It is the Zalatath, the Blade of the Black Empire. Zalatath has a mind of its own, ignoring ignore its maddening whispers, do not trust the lies it spins. Take from it what you need, but always remember that the dark presence in the blade is not your ally. It's cool, and a lot of people love this weapon, because of the fact that if you're just toddling along, the weapon will start whispering to you, and it'll kind of try to drive you insane. <laughs> and that's something I keep meaning to do because he was my main the whole way through Warlords I feel like I should be doing something with this guy so I'm thinking if I get done with my Shaman Order Hall uh, campaign I might come do some things on the Shadow Priest and then move on to the Demon Hunter and then to the Mage eventually because I want to experience their class order campaigns too because each individual class has its own little campaign is completely different from anybody else and I want to experience this guy's. So he has the blade in one hand, Oop, don't know where I'm going, and he has a little book of dark magic in the other. So let's have a look at its upgrades. You can strengthen your void torrents, uh, your insanity, it has a new resource anymore, it doesn't have shadow orbs, it has insanity. So when you build it and then unleash it you go insane for like a little bit. Uh, there's dam more damage increase to Shadow Word Death, Sphere of Insanity, Manifest, let's see what its appearances are, I never looked at these actually. Okay, so there's the regular blue, it's the slightly purpley one, that's kind of evil looking. The Embrace of the Old Gods, Oh, it's got some particle effects, that one's kind of cool, it's green and fell. looks a bit bloody now you see there's vision of madness these are the pvp traits and they look so so good it looks like a broken blade and that's what i like about it look at that it looks shattered i like that one so it's original this is what it could look like if i pvp but i do not let's try and find a target to do some damage on so here we are in Orgmar, going to do some damage to a training dummy. And with the Shadow Priest it's all about building insanity and then unleashing it to raise all holy hell. So let's give it a go. We start with Mind Blast, then we put on the dots and then fill with things. So Mind Blast, dots, Mind Flay, Shadow Word Void, cool things you know until you start to see the insanity bar build and uh, this starts to glow so let's see what we can do pop power infusion and void eruption 
Let's see what Void Torn does. Ooh. Cool. You got Void Bolt. I mean, if you do this properly and you know what you're at, you can have ridiculous damage, I'm led to believe. And it's something I kind of want to do at some point. Oh, look at that. Staying there forever. I mean, there's half a million damage. See, look. Tentacle. Oh, the tentacles grow out of your back and you become part of the void. And It's really cool looking, but I just haven't been able to sit down and sort it out for myself yet. But that was a brief little look at my shadow priest as it is and i should come back to it at some point warcraft's newest class and the most you see it pretty much everywhere in the broken isles its artifact is the twin blades of the deceiver oh they have different names that's cool Verus and Muramus. let's see what they look like no don't sit down you age get up get up and take my there you go or war glaives, kill some shit. So, uh, there was a here through twin blades and war with Okay, this is the kind of damage then that a demon hunter can do, and it's cool because there's so much mobility in this class. Like this, Oof. You jump back and then zoom again. Throw this fury of the old The lag would be nice. Slicing, dicing. Uh, blade dance, and then my favorite uh, demon hunter spell is this eye beam. It's so fucking cool, and it just melts everything in your path. I honestly don't know why I don't play this more. A demon hunter is so fucking cool. This might be. Ooh, look at that! I nearly tipped over the world there. So we are in Mardun, the Shattered Abyss, which is on the starting planet for Demon Hunters. I think, I know I said I would probably play the Shadow Priest, but I think a Demon Hunter will be the one I try to level next, because its class order hall should be interesting, and should avoid, should avoid, what? Should include Mr. Illidan. See, I haven't even chosen his own yet. Haven't even chosen a zone. Finally, we have the mage. This is an alliance mage with its artifact, Evan Chill. Evan Chill contained only a slither of Allardy's might, but even that was more than most magi could ever hope of wielding. This one really got to me in terms of it took forever to do this because mages deal damage, but they don't, they can't heal, and I was constantly having to go kill something jump back, heal and then move in again and by the time I'd moved in again they had respawned and it's the same situation over and over and over again but it's I 100% I know that my mage rotation here is completely wrong it's just I don't really play it an awful lot I played it just before Legion launched in order to get up the 100 so I can do its artifact quest this is effectively just a little demonstration of some of the skills it has. So, root of power, pop that little ball, it kills fucking everything in sight. Uh, chills, ray of frost, flurry, which is like throwing a snowball, frost bomb, cast a blizzard, ebon bolt, which is kind of cool, it's like a big giant fucking thing. Oh no, there's, there's a glacial spike. I need to build up some more ice shards first. Oop, nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. There we are. Big giant ice shard. Let's go. Booyah! Oh, I'm attacking two things, I didn't realise. Flurry again, some snowballs, frost bombs. Put some defence up, get some more blizzards on the go, corn cold. Yeah, all the typical kind of ice attacks. But there are a few that I I, I, really, I really like. It's like the Evan Bolt and the Glacial Spike. There was also one, where is it? Talents. Uh, Comet Storm. That when you cast it, it just boom, 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 boom. Throws all these like uh, icy comets down. And it's cool, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel as good as throwing a big giant fucking Glacial Spike in someone's face. But... There we have it. I said I was going to tell you my view on Legion and I just kind of showed you the 
the classes I have at max level at the minute. But my view on Legion is pretty much simple. It's a fantastic expansion and its launch was so well done. There was a little bit of lag at the beginning obviously when everybody wanted the... That was a fly by the way. Everybody wanted to get the same quest in Dalaran. But once you kind of got it there and you moved on, there was barely any lag. I suffered lag probably two three days later once in Dalaran when everybody was trying to kill a big giant demon. But otherwise, it was absolutely perfect. No lag, no problems, no disconnects. The game itself, there is an absolute fuck ton of things to do. I have been going at my shaman for ages, and I still have a shit ton of stuff to do. I'm not max level on my leatherworking yet. My skinning is on its way up. I haven't completed the shaman order halls yet. I'm still world questing. Uh, there are five zones in the Broken Isles. There's Valshara, there's Azuna, High Mountain, which is basically just a big giant mountain that you run around, and it can be quite annoying. My favourite zone was Valshara because of the aesthetics. My least favourite zone was High Mountain because it it might have been just a case of I got bored in High Mountain, and the fact that you had to go up, find these wee stupid paths. I know that's exploration, but just for me... High Mountain got very boring, and that, that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own kind of little view. But tell me what your zone, your favorite zone is below. I'd be interested to see if you were the same as me, or if you preferred something else. Stormheim was a cool zone for like Viking-esque warriors and things. There is one thing to sum this game up, though, and. It's a weird way of looking at things. Blizzards or World of Warcraft's you know, most popular expansions were the Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King. And to me, Legion is basically the two of those put together to further another story. My reasoning behind it, Stormheim is very, very similar to the Howling Fjord with its, uh, its Viking architecture and basically the Viking NPCs that you see. Its music is very, very similar. Uh, Dalaran came with us to the Broken Isles as it did the Northrend. The Burning Crusade side of it is we have Illidan and we have the Burning Legion with us. So, it's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Take this one and this one, which were the best, put them together and make another brand new story out of it. Fantastic. And it's working well because everybody I've spoken to so far have had positive reviews on it and I've just noticed that this video is getting quite long because I ramble on like a fucking rambler <laughs> so to sum up Legion is fantastic playing two three weeks now I still haven't run out of stuff to do that's just on one character when I go to the other ones there'll be a whole different class order campaign and different professions to follow on obviously the quest thing will be the same then when you reach max level you've got world quests and Suramar. I forgot to mention Suramar. Suramar is one of the biggest zones ever and it has a whole entire campaign in it that you can only reach once you get max level. So once you get everything done in there then as far as more in 7.1 there will be more campaigns and more quests for you to do in Suramar as well as we will all return to Karazhan. Again similar to the Burning Crusade we go to Karazhan again. But the trailer for Karazhan 7.1 looks insanely mental. Like upside down rooms and twisted alleyways and it just looks fun. Hold that thought, I'm going to move away from those woods because they're very fucking loud. But there we have it. Let me know below how much I rambled here. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I didn't show you too much more of Legion. Let me know below if you want to see like a... I'd not a, 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 like a tour of each zone if you want to see what High Mountain looks like in comparison to Azuna which is very flat, High Mountain is very tall, then you've got Stormheim which is Vikings and Valshara which is Druids and Night Elves and all that lovely stuff. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you're a Shaman fan or for my little body Thrall here because yay Thrall. And if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe and Join our little channel here, and I will see all you lovely people again soon. Bye!